Hello everyone, this is Osama Rizvi from Primary Vision Network and welcome to another episode of Monday Macro View. So, as discussed last time, there is a lot happening, but once again, we're going to take hold of certain threads. Uh, one of the, so mainly, I want to discuss today oil supply concern that whether there will be an oil supply crunch leading to another rally, a rally that most of the people are pricing in at the moment. Secondly, if, uh, secondly, what are the latest developments on recession? I continue to build the case for an upcoming recession because that is something people still in question we don't buy because there is no other way. We will see why. And thirdly, the effect of all the recent developments on the global, on the developing countries because uh, you might have noticed that I, I really want to bring this perspective into the whole narrative because they not only have a lot of intrinsic value in terms of holdings and in terms of global demand, but otherwise as well, they own a large um, uh, chunk of global population and things are always really bad as compared to other countries in the world when such discrepancies happen. So let's dig into that. First of all, uh, I want to discuss the oil supply concerns. So basically the narrative is that due to the underinvestment, um, post COVID-19 and due to the energy transition concerns and ESG, the oil production is less and the oil demand is going to outstrip that and there would be an oil supply crunch. However, recent data by Votexa shows that oil production in the um, Atlantic Basin and their exports have actually been increasing. So compared to 7.1 million barrels per day um, last year, now they are shipping around 7.6 million barrels per day, which is closer to the pre-pandemic level. So Guyana, Brazil, uh, Algeria, United States, um, Libya, of course, they, as you can see in front of you, their production and exports have actually been increasing. So this goes, you know, against what uh, people are mostly believing at the moment. And you, when you tie this with the recessionary fears and the global economic indicators, when you see manufacturing falling down, when you see uncertainty, when you see, as we will see, all the indicators heading south, you you might not there, there isn't a strong case for a uh, you know stable if not an increase in oil demand and hence I don't see a fear or a, you know any impending supply crunch in the picture. But speaking about recession, so the Fed continues to increase rates, therefore dollar continues to get stronger and that puts very uh, huge downward pressure on uh, the developing countries and their currencies. You can see Asian currencies versus dollar falling, in fact, plunging. Similarly, global uh, manufacturing and new export orders in the region, they are also plunging. This speaks a lot in terms of the global economic health. Most of these products are raw materials for other countries, for the developing countries, so it's all a chain, a domino effect, if you may. Closely related to this is that you don't look at the region, or the Asian region or the developing countries and emerging economies, but even on the global scale, you are seeing in front of your screens, the it's, it's a, you know, it's a bigger picture view of things. All the indicators are going down, down. The, this is just the start. I continue to stress that we need to tie this to the monetary tightening cycle. That isn't going to stop anytime soon. So Fed is going to go all the way up until 5%. Five, uh, 5%. So, and even though the recent comments were a little bit, uh, you know, dovish, but they didn't say that we won't stop raising, we, we will stop raising interest rate. We might not see a 75 basis point hike, but we're still going to see hikes. So that is going to continue, uh, you know, putting down pressure on global manufacturing, uncertainty, volatility. Uh, this is also another interesting chart. These charts were shown by Mark in the Econ show, a brilliant, brilliant, uh, another one, you know, another brilliant segment. Uh, and he really speaks, goes deep into the data points, but due to the paucity of time, I'll just give you the bigger picture. So new orders on a global scale are also contracting. Um, once again, we are, we are still there in terms of Fed. So this will get bad before it get, before it gets better. Um, I wasn't able to do the, uh, the market sentiment record because, uh, moving houses and there was, uh, you know, other things going on, but you type global manufacturing or PMI, on Google and you hit the news tab, it's another important gauge, I think, uh, to just to see, to get a feeler of the market impulse on a collective level and what's happening. So you can see PMIs, ISMs, manufacturing indices in China, Poland, Euro, 
zone, um, uh, United States of America, Russia, all are contracting, falling, plunging, decreasing. And when you type to the oil demand side that we spoke about in the starting, you see that there isn't a strong case for a strong oil demand. If anything, oil demand might remain lukewarm or will be on the lower side. And hence, I don't see another oil price rally. In fact, I see that bearish uh, factors are piling up and we might see another sell-off. We might see another correction in the markets, profit taking, and things can go south. So most of, you know, most of my shows in the coming weeks as well, they're going to be like a build up, build up to what is coming. And this is very important when you, when you take personal, you know, you're going to buy a car or um, lease a house, um, you, know, you know, pay mortgage on that or business investments. We need to be cognizant of these facts. So challenges remain. We'll see when things start to turn, um, take a positive turn, but not, not anytime soon. Uh, that's all from today. Please let us know in the comments what you, what are the things you would want me to discuss. The purpose of this program mainly is to just take a, you know, bigger picture view of things and really set the context of what will happen or what is about to happen in the coming days and weeks. Thank you once again. Have a great week ahead.